life outside of music is everything in the music everything that's being said in the music what the music is literally just doing is adding a soundtrack to everything so that people can bear it but yeah for me i think life is just everything in the music so whether i'm too much into the music or not i'm still experiencing life if it's music it's like yeah, you can't separate the two sometimes it feel like the wave grows i've lost the will to the pain so when i walk in and your face glow Makes me wanna just build for your sake. Hold up, you wanna build too? Pass me on a brick too. Tell me you don't wanna melody, be part of a melody, rhythm, and really good writing. Good writing is something that speaks uh, to someone, and it's not it's not just a compilation of words. It, it's it's a it paints a picture. Yeah, it paints a picture. It's visual. It's, it's like a good mix. It has to be visual. It has to just look visual. It's it's something that I think as you learn more and more and more, you learn that you can take something further. But because you are in that profession and someone else is not quite that deep into it, they won't really see it to to that depth. But um, they'll be happy with how far you went. But I think as an artist, someone who who takes that thing not just as a job satisfying a client but as an artist trying to actually see the vision through and see it come to its biggest form of life then it will always just bother you no matter how good you get it's just always going to be there i always have that hmm. then it was i think being heard i really wanted wanted to be heard I was more of a poet than anything and trying to get the right sound and trying to get the best quality was just so the vision was clearer for people to hear and now that you know yeah there's people who are listening here and they um, I'm not looking for like millions to approve something or, or anything it's just okay I've gotten that little ear I, well i have a constant ear that i can always you know share with and now for me it's like growth now it's just i'm trying to grow each time in my art form in my spirit um i i, I encounter a lot of people from different backgrounds different you know i grow in different ways each day that's just been the, the journey everything i am all in um if if I'm holding anything back, it's because it's for a later song. It's not because I'm actually holding it back. In fact, I'm I'm the most honest in my music. Yeah, because I think artists are quite damaged. I'm sorry to say this, but artists are are a mess. I don't know any great artist who's not a mess. Amy Whitney, and I. I honestly don't know and without disrespect I have my own pieces too but they help push something out of you not to say they're good you don't want to go through them but because you go through them you take that advantage and put together something that makes it feel beautiful but the, the reality is you're going through a lot and that's why you can't separate the two that for an artist's life could just translate into something that feels beautiful. I, I think this 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 is one girl, Aretha, that I work with, and she used to call me jazz because every beat of mine would have an element of, of, of jazz in it. But the more I grew and the more artists I worked with, I obviously had to, you know, do more in other genres and kind of um, have those, those certain elements when you work in certain songs you know it, it can't just be a signature thing um, and i think from learning that i i stopped really having a sound i just whenever an artist comes in i just try to read their energy figure out how they're feeling is it upbeat is it like low is it chill is it sad is it 
you know, I, I try to follow their rhythm in a way and go with that. Uh, White Rose is a project I I did feeling like I wanted to capture a moment. So if maybe let's say um, something happens, it triggers this, it does this, it does that, everything builds into that moment. And that's exactly what White Rose was. It was about me seeing someone and capturing everything that happened around them. So writing it was easy because I had a picture in mind. Like I said, good writing is a picture. If the picture's already there, you just have to translate it. I'm basically just tracing it and putting it in a more melodic way, something that feels um, easy to to take in. So the process was just me living and capturing it. Uh, with White Rose, I want the listener to experience the journey of finding and going through love. I think um, in all its negative and positive ways, fully experience it, be real and not be that, um, you know, the fantasy kind of love, which is a bit too perfect, you know, and too clean because, you know, you can't say certain things or talk about certain things, but I wanted it to translate, to be real. And also, I want people to be able to listen to this and want to repeat these things to their significant other. You know, I, I, I literally want people to be able to repeat those lines to their significant other. Say I love you. As a, I remember when I when I wrote that song, um, I came across a a beat. This this was actually the first song that was supposed to give me direction of, of my project, and so obviously there was a lot of pressure on me to write the song that's that's gonna feel like a project. And when I wrote it, I wrote it to a beat. I went to Beat Stars, played something there. It was some kind of for your type of song, like Peaches before Peaches actually came out. It was like, but it should come out. But anyway. Um, I wrote the song to that, and then now uh, it was time to produce the song. I played some keys, sang it, um, and for me it was a matter of figuring out how far into this relationship should I be going, or how far is the next person also like trying to go in this relationship. So I'm trying to figure out are they here for the fun side. Are they here to like, stick around, things like that. But I do it obviously in a bit of a romantic way, um, a bit sexual here and there to show that I am not against just being a fun side. I just need to know what they're doing. And that was literally the, the process. The first side is um, if they love you, and the first side is the, the second side is if they want you. Um, and yeah, I think from there on, I had just the keys on it and it sounded nice, everybody around me liked it, but I knew it was just a skeleton and so I sent it to a couple producers and Major C was one of them and Major C. In fact, when I sent it to Major C, it wasn't for him to create the beat but for him to create something for the project, to get a taste of the project. And he fell in love with the song. He's like, no, send me this. I want to do something with it. And he came back with the beat that you hear now on See I Love You. And it was just beautiful.